Doctor, thanks for your time. Good to see you again. Our topic is acid reflux disease, and so the question that we always like to do is define things first. What is acid reflux? Acid reflux is a condition in which contents of the stomach, which is usually rich in acid, makes its way up into the esophagus, leading to the burning sensation that people will usually call heartburn. Okay, so acid reflux is heartburn. That's right. That's right. Why do we call it heartburn if it's, if it's in your esophagus? Uh, that, that's a very good question. It's, uh, it's mainly because the heart is also in the chest and the esophagus is in the chest. And so it's almost like it's a burning sensation in the heart. It's actually a burning sensation in the esophagus. And uh, that's a, the, I'm, I'm glad you also asked that question because sometimes people think they're having acid reflux, whereas they're actually having symptoms of, of their heart, including a heart attack. So. It is called a heart, a heart burn. It's actually a misnomer, which is really discomfort in the esophagus, but it could be confused with, with, with symptoms coming from the heart. Very well. It seems like more people than ever seem to have acid reflux or complain of heartburn. So how common is it? Well, it, it's, it's quite common. A lot of studies have been done. Uh, in the Western population, which of course includes the United States, it's estimated about three to five percent of the population will have acid reflux symptoms on a daily basis. Uh, if you stretch it to actually on a weekly basis, then most people think about 10 to 12 percent of the population will have acid reflux symptoms or heartburn symptoms on a weekly basis. And of course, when you go to just once a month, almost 25-30 uh, percent of the population will, will have symptoms of, of heartburn just once a month. There are so many drugs you see uh, advertised to treat acid indigestion, uh, Pepto-Bismol, antacid tablets, Pepsidases, Zantac, Prilosec, Prevacid, Nexium. How do you know which one to take and which ones work or how do you make that decision? Uh, that, that's a very good question. The reason why you have so many choices over the counter is of course it, it, it tells how serious this is, how common this is, how many people want to get something for relief. Uh, what I usually tell people is that it's not unusual to have heartburn or indigestion. If you just have it maybe once a month or once every two to three months, uh, just uh, w look for what you, what you think may have caused it and try to avoid it if it's possible. If it's getting on a much more frequent basis, then there are several choices. One choice is a choice of antacid, like you, like you mentioned, and there are several, ch several groups of drugs that are called antacids. Uh, once you move away from that, people that have much more severe symptoms, there are also another group of drugs that are called H2 blockers. And uh, that, that group of drugs actually have been on the market for a longer time. And the next, of course, biggest uh, group of drugs are drugs that are called proton pump inhibitors. These are the most powerful drugs that are available for treatment of uh, uh, acid reflux. Over the years, some of these drugs have become uh, over the counter, and so you can actually get some of the proton pump inhibitors over the counter. But the majority of the proton pump inhibitors still require a prescription uh, to get them. So uh, whether you take it or not depends on how serious the symptom is, and of course, uh, the, uh, a good discussion with your doctor. How do you know if you're just going to the drugstore which one to pick? Is there any way to know? Uh, well, the, all of these drugs are, are, are approved for use of short-term treatment of acid reflux symptoms. In fact, if you look at most of them, most of them usually stay for just a few weeks. So if you're having symptoms on a much more regular basis, and what's regular basis, people will ask me, I say if you're having acid reflux symptoms up to two to three times a week, it's time to see a doctor about it. I will not just do that by myself I just, and just go over the counter and just go pick something. It's a sign of a much more serious acid reflux, uh, uh, which potentially may have complications. I think people in that category should be under the care of a physician. You may have answered this, but let me just go ahead and ask it anyway. Sure. And you, uh, you mentioned two to three times a week. Is that how you know that acid indigestion has become serious enough to where you need to see a doctor? That is correct. What I usually tell people are having symptoms maybe just once a week, once every two weeks. I think you can just try something over the counter. If you're having up to two to three times symptoms of, uh, of acid reflux a week, yes, absolutely, you need to see a doctor about that. So when, when they come to you, when a patient comes to you, you know, and is having chronic problems with uh, acid reflux disease, how do you treat it? Well, the, uh, the first thing is we, gotta make, we want to make sure that, that acid reflux is what people have. Just like we just said, some of these symptoms could actually be coming from the heart. So you want to make sure that 
you're not assuming it's acid reflux. And uh, so most people will usually say that usually when I eat late or when I eat fatty food like pizza and, uh, uh, and or even when I have ice cream, some people will say if I drink soda, I have this feeling of a burning sensation that seems to be coming from my stomach up into my chest. And most people usually can time, figure out what, what food is bringing this on. Uh, and so the first thing we want to be sure is that they actually have acid reflux. And, and that information I can get by just talking to most people. A few people though, and because, and this may be part of what we're going to talk about later, there are potential complications of acid reflux disease. And so uh, we want to make sure that people actually have acid reflux disease. So we want to make sure that they don't have complications of acid reflux disease, and we can talk about that later. And uh, some of that eliminating complications may involve use of a flexible tube, a small tube to go down into the esophagus to check the esophagus. We can also make a diagnosis of acid reflux by putting a little capsule into the esophagus that monitors the acid. So where I'm going with this is we want to make sure that the diagnosis is right. Once we've established a diagnosis of acid reflux, then the uh, uh, treatment is usually, uh, 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 the first thing I tell people is number one, watch your diet and don't eat late. Because usually most people say that when I eat late and I go and lay down, then I tend to have this burning sensation in my esophagus. So don't eat, I usually tell people try and avoid eating within two hours of going to bed. And if you've already identified some food items that may be bringing this on, you want to limit some of those food items as much as is possible. So these are usually called simple general advice for anybody. Once we move beyond that, then we talk about medication. Most of the people that I see will require a prescription medication for treatment of the acid reflux. And they're usually uh, pills or capsules that are taken uh, once daily. Do um, most people respond well to the treatment? Yes, absolutely. Most people who have acid reflux who get some prescription treatment for acid reflux respond very well to, us, to, to the treatment. Well over 90, 95% of people will have good response to, to treatment with, with a prescription. You may have touched on this earlier, and in fact you did touch on this earlier. Can what feels like heartburn, acid indigestion, actually be something more serious? Okay. The biggest one we, we worry about is the heart. And uh, that's why even though it's considered a misnomer, we always want to make sure that it's not a problem from the heart. And so when somebody tells me I'm having this pain in my chest, uh, the, first, the, the biggest concern we want to make sure is, 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 is to make sure it's not your heart. And it's a little, you can, most of the time we can separate it. Symptoms of, of the heart are usually many times maybe related to activities. So people will say I have this chest pain, it's usually on my left side, it may go to my neck, it may go to my arm. It's usually when I'm doing something, it tends to get better when I take a little rest. That's slightly different from, the, from, the, from what most people with uh, heartburn or indigestion or acid reflux will say. Most people with heartburn or indigestion of acid reflux will just say, usually I feel this burning sensation that comes, seems to be coming from my stomach and seems to be coming into, uh, uh, into my chest. And some people will even say when I take some of some medication over the counter, like some of the ones that we talked about, that, that, that it eliminates the symptoms. That makes it, uh, that uh, basically makes it, helps me narrow it into the esophagus rather than the heart. So the biggest one is really to make sure it's not a trouble with the heart. Very well. You mentioned that patients respond well to, uh, to medication, but are there any, any risks to long-term use of medications like Nexium and other, uh, other drugs that you've mentioned uh, for taking them for over an extended period of time? Yes. Uh, these, medicines, uh, these medicines have been on the market for the earliest, the, most, the, the first one came on the market over 20 years ago. So these medicines have been on the market for close to about 20 years now. And so we have a lot of body of data on use, on use of this medication. And a lot of people take this medication, so it's been, over the years, we've been able to say what are the potential risks of taking this medication. Uh, a study came out in the last uh, couple years. This is a study that linked use of uh, uh, proton pump inhib inhibitors, which is, what the, which is the Nexium and the Prevacid and the Dexel and those group of medication. That study showed that there is a slightly higher risk of having pneumonia you, which we call community acquired pneumonia, that's pneumonia that you get outside the hospital setting. So pneumonia is a, is a, there's a slightly higher risk of having pneumonia, there's a slightly, there's also a study that suggested that there may be a slightly higher risk of what we call C. difficile colitis, which is uh, an inflammation or a disease that affects the colon. 
The other potential side effects are, 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 are the effect on, on iron. So there is a potential that it may affect iron absorption, which may lead to anemia, and that it may also affect calcium absorption, which may also lead, lead to weakness of the bones. So uh, I, I usually, uh, but these medicines are not to, what I usually make clear to everybody, these are very safe medications that have been available for a very, very, very long time, but they do have potential side effects. Well, you've just kind of enumerated the risks of treatment. Let's flip the coin. What are the potential dangers of leaving acid reflux untreated? Well, the, 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 uh, the, the first one is, is that you get miserable. Then, uh, so the first one I usually tell, say is that it affects people's lifestyle. So we want to improve people's lifestyle. So there's no point suffering in silence is usually what I tell people. So the, number one, if you, if you have treatment of the acid reflux, then, then lifestyle gets better. That's the first one. Then the next most important one is development of scar tissue, which we will call stricture is the medical term for it. Uh, just like acid, the, the esophagus is not designed to tolerate acid. That's why it causes the burning sensation. Uh, the acid is in the stomach all the time, and we don't know the acid is in the stomach. Right. We just know about it when it gets into the esophagus because the esophagus is not designed to, to, to tolerate acid. So the acid uh, uh, effect on the esophagus over a long period of time can lead to damage to the esophagus, which is called esophagitis. And those over time can lead to development of scar tissue in the esophagus, which is called a stricture. And over time, that can affect swallowing. The esophagus is a very small tube that is just designed to take food from the mouth into the stomach. And so when you have scar tissue development and you develop a scar in the esophagus, then people have difficulty swallowing. Uh, 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 that's one. Another one that is what we call Barrett's esophagus. That changes in the lining of the esophagus over time, uh, uh, which is called Barrett's esophagus. Uh, the reason Barrett's esophagus is a big deal is that it's been shown that if you have Barrett's esophagus, then you have a slightly higher risk of developing cancer in the esophagus and at the junction of the uh, esophagus and the stomach. So uh, scar tissue development and potentially, even though not very common, development of cancer in, of the esophagus are big uh, complications uh, in a long time on people that have acid reflux that are not being treated. Is it possible for someone to still have acid reflux even though they're taking medication? Yes, yes. Uh, what I just said is most people respond to treatment, as, uh, uh, and, uh, but the treatment varies from individual to individual. Most people will respond to just taking a medication once a day. There are some patients that may require medication twice a day. Some patients may also even require more than two pills a day to control the acid reflux. Uh, ultimately, the majority of the people that we treat will respond to medication. It's just how much of medication will have to be given to control the symptoms will vary from individual to individual. However, medical management is not the only choice for treating acid reflux. There are other also surgical management of, uh, of acid reflux, in which case and in which an operation is done to help correct the weakness of the, of the junction of the esophagus and the stomach. What are some practical steps that we can take to reduce acid reflux? Uh, the uh, one thing that has been shown is that as the weight of the population goes up, the incidence of acid reflux goes up. And so in Western world, where uh, as, as obesity goes up, as people gain weight, acid reflux incidence goes up. So the first thing is for people to watch their diet and for people that are overweight or obese to lose weight. That's very, very critical. The next thing, the, uh, the other thing to, to, uh, to look into is to most importantly, to not to eat too soon, uh, to, to watch the timing of eating and right. the timing that people go to bed. I usually say at least a couple hours between when people eat and when they go to bed. That's another very one. And then look at whatever, thing, whatever medication or whatever food that you've identified that brings this on. You might want to limit or avoid it. Usually, they're usually fatty food. And the reason fatty food usually does this is because they tend to stay longer in the stomach. And the longer it stays in the stomach, the higher the chances that it's going to come back and into the esophagus. Very well. Doctor, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.